Good morning. Good morning. My name is Keith Nerby and I serve as principal of Sun Prairie High School. Today we honor Scott, Scott Aubey, who, as an alumnus of Sun Prairie High School, embodied the best of what we try to instill in our students. Each year we come together and honor a past graduate who has demonstrated outstanding qualities and skills. Our wall of success was started many years ago to provide our students with an opportunity to look into the future of what they can accomplish. However, we do this by looking into the past, at some of our most outstanding alumni and the contributions they have made to society. In fact, we have two previous Wall of Success Award recipients in the audience today. Will George Maurer and Steve Sviam please stand and be recognized? Congratulations, and thank you for, for joining us today. Today we honor Scott, not only because he was gifted, a gifted musician, an amazing husband, father, brother, and son, but because he worked hard every day to make this world a little better. And that is what our wall of success is all about. For our students in this room right now, you make choices every day about how to live your life, and those choices will follow you into adulthood. I ask you to look at Scott and all the other recipients of the Wall of Success and ask yourself a simple question. How can I make the world just a little better? The students in this room will one day become a part of a select group of people who can call themselves alumni of SPHS. Do not take this lightly. The education you receive today will make all the difference in the success you have in the future. Scott demonstrated a great talent. However, it wasn't his talent that defined him. It was his strong work ethic. That work ethic went beyond the halls of Sun Prairie High School and followed him as he became a musician, a singer, a lawyer, and all of the, the great things that he accomplished later in life. As you leave here today, I ask you to remember that Sun Prairie is the start of what your life will become. Don't waste it, don't take it for granted, and continue to work towards the greatness that lies in all of you, just like Scott did. Thank you. I welcome two, one current teacher, one former teacher, Ms. Mary Schmidt and Candy Douglas, to speak to you now. Thank you. Good morning. It's an honor to be with all of you today. Thanks to the Abbey family for again allowing me to be witness to your lives. Gratitude to all the people at Sun Prairie High School who worked so hard to make this gathering possible, especially Andrea Omeja, and to all of you who took the time to attend. But here is what is very strange. The person we're all throwing a party for isn't here. When Scott Abbey was nominated for the Wall of Success last year, he had already been diagnosed with a brain tumor at age 46. The Wall of Success has never had to honor a graduate who has passed away. We are in uncharted water. But Scott would want us to find some silver lining in all of this and not be too somber. So let's celebrate this amazing person he became while on this earth. My charge today is to tell you a little bit about our honoree when he was a student at Sun Prairie High School. Scott Nathan Abbey attended the school from 1982 until 1986. He skipped a grade, so he was young for his class, was extremely intelligent, and possessed pretty extraordinary musical chops. Scott was in band, jazz, choir, madrigals, and in musicals throughout the years. His contribution to the jazz program were considerable, and I quote Mr. Sviam, Scott was a gifted trumpet player and improviser who became excited about jazz and inspired other students to work hard. We featured Scott on a Frank Mantooth arrangement of the tune Cherokee. It was a challenging chart that had two choruses of trumpet solo. Scott did so well with it that we decided to perform 32 measures of his solo unaccompanied. He remained a friend of Sun Prairie Jazz by providing financial and spiritual support to our students each year they traveled to New York. Scott's vocal skills were equally strong, and even in high school, he had a beautiful lyrical quality to his singing voice that could stop you in your tracks. 
Some of us here today remember him bringing the character of Tevye to life in Fiddler on the Roof. But he was still a kid and went through the same kinds of things every teenager goes through, the things that you all deal with every day. If he were here, he would tell you that this, that life wasn't perfect. But as he grew older, he became increasingly grateful for his experience at Sun Prairie High School. Looking at life in the rearview mirror can do that to you. Last June, Scott stated, the music education I received at this institution is the single most important component of the education I received here. He frequently would mention what he called the embarrassment of riches he received in his musical training, both here and at Lawrence University. He would tell you today that you are lucky to be a musician at this school, that you have the best of the best for teachers, an enviable facility, and community support that is unparalleled. In the last year of his life, Scott became a tireless advocate for school music, and I'm hopeful that someone with an earshot of today's observation um, will take up this cause. And while we're at it, it would be really great if someone out in this audience could find a cure for the insidious disease called cancer that has kept Scott from us today. I'm so sorry you never got to meet Scott. That is a great injustice. He would have given you so much inspiration and hope and love and optimism and drive and gratitude. He should be here with you. But know that he was a force, and many of us were lucky to have him in our lives. You would have loved him. Good morning. My name is Candy Douglas, and I'm one of the choir directors here at Sun Prairie High School. Scott contacted me last January, wondering if I might be interested in collaborating on an original composition to be performed by concert choir at the Wall of Success Assembly in May. The story and the process surrounding this composition are an interesting glimpse into the mind and the heart of an accomplished musician and composer. I'm going to begin with his first letter that he wrote to me. Hi, Candy. We didn't have a chance to meet at Mary Schmidt's concert last June, but I was one of the speakers. You may remember me as Steph Virtue Klockau's prom date. <laughs> Although I make my living as a lawyer and stay connected artistically as a singer, I also write and arrange. My undergraduate degree from Lawrence is in music theory and music composition. With absolutely no pressure to say yes, I think there was pressure, actually. I can only imagine how much you already have to work on with the kids this year. I'm wondering whether you might be open to me writing a short and simple piece for concert choir to perform. If you are, I'd like to dedicate the piece to Mary, who will be in attendance without letting her know in advance. It was, of course, a great honor. We set about creating a piece that would suit the specific needs and talents of the group of students. Scott asked interesting musical questions about section strengths, DVC options, tempo preferences, and whether accompanied versus unaccompanied would be the right choice. Taking all of these factors into mind, he replied about a week later, Hi Candy, greetings from suburban DC. I'm underneath 30 inches of snow. I'm from Wisconsin and all, but this is ridiculous. Thanks for getting back to me so quickly with such useful information. I refuse to believe, however, that you have the one choir in the universe in which tenors constitute the strongest section. I suppose there's a first time for everything. I think I have what I need at this point to write something probably slow and pretty and unaccompanied with occasional splits into A parts. I like playing with inner voices, so strong tenors and altos is actually great. I suppose there is one question which I would ask Mary, but I want the piece and the dedication to be a surprise to her that day. I can't ask her directly. Do you know of any particular text that she loves or might like to hear set? Best to you, Scott. I suggested a few ideas to Scott, and he settled on a poem called Still Water by Yeats. Scott referred to the poem as pure gold. 
and managed to write the entire composition and send it to us within about two weeks' time. The piece we received was stunning. Interesting play between the tenor and the alto parts and a steadfast presence in the bass and soprano. We worked hard to learn the piece, hoping we could perform it well. Scott continued to communicate with us during the learning process, fielding questions from the students. It was a labor of love for Scott. He loved Sun Prairie High School. He loved the choir department at Sun Prairie High School. And specifically, he loved his former teacher, Mary Schmidt. He knew, of course, that I was a willing accomplice because I loved all of those things too. Although I wish I could show you the final composition today, I will leave you with the poem that he chose. Still Water by W.B. Yeats. We can make our minds so like still water that beings gather about us that they may see, that it may be their own images, and so live for a moment with a clearer, perhaps even with a fiercer life, because of our quiet. Thank you. Good morning. I'm, uh, I'm Scott's older brother, Greg. Uh, those who, who know of our family, and, and uh, Bernie, Steve, Mary, uh, were witness to Scott and I going through high school. There were 19 months separating us. Uh, we did all the same things. We were both in the trumpet section. We both sang. We were a bit competitive, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, so I think it's a little bit ironic, uh, and I think he would find it amusing that I am up here speaking to you today instead of him. Uh, I ask myself what Scott would want you to hear today. Um, it's unfortunate, as Mary said, it's really unfortunate that you can't hear from him directly. He was a really special guy, and he would have had a lot of uh, very inspirational uh, things to say to you today. But I'm going to do my best. Uh, the first thing Scott would do is he would thank everyone. He would thank you for being here today. Um, he would especially thank George Connum for nominating him for this honor. Thank you, George. He would thank uh, Dr. Saren. He would thank Principal Nerby, uh, the nominating committee for his selection. Uh, I want to thank Andrea Omeja. Andrea, where are you? Are you here? Someplace. Could you stand? Let's give Andrea a hand. She did a great job. I've been asked to talk about Scott's accomplishments. You've already heard some of them, and I just want to elaborate briefly on some of those things. Uh, it's, it's been said Scott loved Sun Prairie. Scott loved his experience at Sun Prairie High School, especially in the music department. Um, Scott was an avid Facebook poster. Um, he shared the details of his struggle with brain cancer transparently with many of you on Facebook over the past year. Um, what was also evident uh, on Facebook and anytime you would talk to Scott is Scott loved Sun Prairie High School. Scott greatly appreciated his experience here. He never took it for granted. Uh, it's something hard to realize while you're going through it. As Mary said, when you get older and you look back, it's really special. So please don't take it for granted. Uh, Scott then went on to Lawrence University where he was in the jazz ensemble under Fred Sturm. Uh, he participated in the choir program under Rick Biello. Uh, he played and sang and conducted at Disney World. And so when you have a music theory and composition major, what's the logical next step? Apply to law school. <laughs> so Scott applied to Harvard Law School, because Scott, being Scott, is not going to apply anyplace else. Uh, he applied to Harvard Law School, was, was admitted, uh, met the love of his life, Jill Newman, wonderful person, uh, also a Harvard Law grad. Uh, worked for years at Debra Boys in Plimpton, which is a, a large firm based in New York City with a satellite office in Washington, D.C., doing securities litigation, which is uh, practicing law is complicated enough. That adds another layer of complexity to practicing law. Uh, Scott still, though, found the time to participate in various professional organi uh, music organizations in the D.C. area, including uh, organizations called Cathedra, uh, Bach Consort, uh, and had the opportunity to sing numerous times at Washington National Cathedral 
and for multiple presidents of the United States. So that was pretty cool, I think. Uh, but that wasn't all there was to Scott. I think Scott was more about uh, relationships. You can really tell about someone by who they surround themselves with, I think. Um, Scott's the son of Alan and Carolyn Aubie, my parents who are here today. Could you stand, please? Uh, as I mentioned before, I'll mention again, Scott was my younger brother. Um, we all have another brother, younger brother, Michael, who lives in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm sure he's watching uh, via the live stream. Hi, Mike. Um, Scott was the husband of Jill, uh, the father of Jake and Noah, two wonderfully talented uh, gentlemen. And Scott was friend of many, and many of you are here today. Uh, many of you followed his battle uh, with brain cancer over the past year. So relationships, I think that really is what strikes me about Scott. Uh, and music education. Um, where did he make and foster and nurture a lot of those re relationships? In Sound of Some Prairie with Ken pa Paris and Bernie Powers and Ann Cedarquist. Uh, in jazz band with Steve Savium, in choir with Mary Schmidt. Uh, in the music organizations, that's where he developed those, music, those uh, individual relationships. And as I came up here this morning, I noticed that I have several friends of mine who are in band with me or in choir with me who are here today. So, so please don't take that for granted. Um, please take a moment as you go through every day and recognize how special it is to be a part of Sun Prairie High School, the Sun Prairie High School Music Department, and to be making the friends that you have uh, here. So what was special and unique about Scott? I think it was his ability to combine ambition with em empathy, to combine passion with thoughtfulness. And he took pride in collective effort, not necessarily individual achievement, which is something he learned at Sun Prairie High School through the incredible educators that he was privileged to be taught by. So on behalf of my family, I thank you for honoring Scott with this incredible recognition. You will continue to honor Scott by providing students with music education opportunities that he was fortunate enough to have here in Sun Prairie. Thank you. A uh, friend of mine from high school, incredible musician, most of you know who he is. Uh, I asked him very recently if he would uh, honor our family by being a part of this program. Uh, he is sup a super busy guy. Right now he's working on the Bobby V life story up in Minneapolis. He arranged all the music for this production. They had a matinee uh, show yesterday and they have rehearsals all week and he came down from Minneapolis to be here with, with you today. Uh, I'd like to introduce the 2012 Wall of Success recipient, George Maurer. Knows how to navigate the song, and um, 
there's a song that Scott wrote when he was 19 years old, um, and we're going to hear uh, it pretty soon in its entirety, but I wanted to point out, uh, as Mary suggested, uh, uh, one of the nuances of Scott was his love for the silver lining. I want to point out uh, some of the silver lining in uh, Scott's changes in this song. Um, there's just four chords I want to highlight here, but um, there's what we call tension and release uh, between um, chords. Uh, some chords have a little bit of tension to them because they're kind of close to each other. And then a chord like that kind of resolves that tension. A little bit more tension there again. And resolve. And these are the four chords that build the basis of this song that we're going to hear. Um, it's amazing because also, as was mentioned, Scott loves inner voices. And what inner voices means is in between those things that we just hear, heard, he has this note constant all the way through those. So if we play them, or the other voice, if you put them all together, Yes. Mm -hmm. 
As a symbol of our appreciation for Scott and his accomplishments since leaving Sun Prairie High School, please accept this Sun Prairie High School blanket. And as a thank you for participating in the Sun Prairie High School Wall of Success ceremony here today, please accept this replica of the plaque that will hang in the Sun Prairie Wall of Success display in the Shea Commons here in Sun Prairie High School, honoring Scott as a member of the Wall of Success. We have a tradition at Sun Prairie High School in the choir department. We have lots of traditions, actually. One of them is to sing a piece called The Benediction at the very last concert of the year, and it's our farewell to the seniors. And um, we decided that it would be an appropriate send-off today for Scott. If there are any alumni members, and I know there are some of you in the audience that would like to come and join us, we would be honored to have your presence up with the choir. I have music available, so please come and join us.
I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to thank uh, Greg, Aubie, um, George Maurer, Mary Schmidt, Candy Douglas, Ben and Mallory, uh, the concert choir, the alumni who came up here and, and spoke, and of course, Scott's family, for joining us today. Uh, I hope, students, you get a glimpse of what it means to be on the wall of success. And I hope that as I look out right now, I see a future wall of success recipient in the crowd today. Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us and for coming today and for honoring Scott and uh, the legacy that he created and, and left. And so um, with that, I thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of today. Students, um, you're dismissed to go to your, to your class. The bell will be ringing shortly. Um, so you can hang out for a few minutes or um, head out to your second, third hour class. Thank you.